Welcome to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. Welcome to our fall season. I'm so excited to be back with you again. I'm so excited about the guests that we're going to be talking to. And we're going to be doing things a little bit differently this season, so I'd like to take a minute and tell you about it. But first, for any of you who are new listeners, I am Paula Shaw. I am a life transition coach. I work with people who are dealing with change. And that change could be a death, a divorce, a job change, a job loss, a health loss. There are all kinds of things that create change in our lives. And, you know, one of the things we can count on, one of the few constants that we have in life is things are going to change. Whether you like the way things are or you don't like the way things are, hang on, because things are going to change. So I help people who are dealing with change that might have been unwelcome or difficult and who need to that extra support and guidance when they're going through change. I'm also an author. I am the author of Chakras the Magnificent Seven, which I unfortunately don't have a copy of in front of me today. I am the author of Grief, When Will This Pain Ever End? which is really, I think, an incredible resource book if you're going through the pain of grief because it's the chapters are very short, but there are lots of processes and articles and tools to help you move through your grief and not get stuck in it. Um, I really love this book. Even if it weren't mine, <laughs> I would recommend it. I really love the way it's put together and how useful it is. And my latest book is called Saying the Right Thing When You Don't Know What to Say. And what I love about this book is it answers, in my opinion, an age-old problem, which is that people, people tend to avoid someone who's dealing with emotional pain because they don't know what to say. They don't know what to do. They want to be supportive. They want to be helpful, but they feel awkward. They feel uncomfortable. And in that state of mind, unfortunately, too often, they don't show up. They don't help the people. They don't give that comfort and support, which is so needed. So saying the right thing when you don't know what to say gives you specific sentences, specific do's and don'ts, things that are helpful to say and things that are not. So you can find both of those books on Amazon, of course, and I think they're great resources. And by the way, if you want to learn more about me, and my work, you can go to paulashaw.com. And while you're there, grab a copy of my free gift, which is a little e-paper on saying 20 things to say and not say when you're talking to people in emotional pain. It's kind of a great cheat sheet that everybody should have in the glove box or in your purse so that when those difficult conversations come up, you'll be ready to go. So that's paulashaw.com. And if you want to learn more about this show, about being a guest or a sponsor on this show, please go to changeituprradio.com. That's changeituprradio.com. All right, in this opening episode, I want to talk about something that I feel is huge among us right now. It's, it's huge among people all over the planet. And that is that this pandemic that we've just lived through, and that is not over yet, right? We're still dealing with it. It created loss and then the subsequent grief resulting from that loss 
among people all over the world. Last year, I did a show that I called A World of Grievers because from the tiniest toddler or baby up through the octogenarians, everybody on the planet experienced loss on some level as a result of this pandemic. And as I mentioned, loss comes in many different packages. And so that loss for you might have been a job loss, might have been a home loss. It might have been the struggle of having kids going to school at home and online. It might have been friends that moved away or people that you actually lost who died of COVID-19. But there isn't a one of us I can think of that escaped experiencing some kind of loss as a result of this pandemic. And so I think it's important that we look at what are the repercussions of that? What's the aftermath look like? How have we been impacted by that loss that we did all, all go through? And so I want to talk a little bit about that. Let's begin with talking about loss itself. Loss, the kind of the way I would define loss is anytime we're being deprived of a person, place, thing, circumstance, or condition that we love or that we've grown used to or that we cherish we are experiencing loss. And the normal natural response to loss is grief. Now, grief is the part of this whole picture that's kind of uh, tricky. It's kind of tricky because normally, if I were to say to you, oh, I saw Samantha and she was grieving, what's the picture that comes into your head? Chances are the picture that comes into your head is someone crying and sad. But sometimes grief shows up as anger. Sometimes it shows up as physical illness. Sometimes it shows up as an inability to sleep or to focus. Sometimes it shows up as intense anxiety or depression. The bottom line here is grief has many faces, and different people will experience grief in different ways. So think about how you responded to the loss that you went through during this whole pandemic time. Did you show up angry? Did you show up scared? Did you show up sad? What about feeling just overwhelmed? What about stuck? Hey, you know, there's actually a condition that psychologists are talking about right now, and they're calling it languishing. Languishing. And the definition of languishing is it's the opposite of flourishing. So languishing looks like burnout, like feeling stuck, being in the doldrums, um, kind of in limbo, you know, not, not bad, but not fabulous. It's this sort of stuck place where a lot of people are. And I believe that they're there because they suffered loss and they didn't really know what to do with their grief because they didn't realize they were grieving in the first place. So I think the first thing we have to remember about grief is that it does come in many different packages. It has many different faces. And it's going to be different for each of us because we've all experienced life in different ways. And the way you grieve is dependent on all the experiences you had leading up to this current one. It's also dependent on whether or not you actually processed and healed your old grief experiences. 
Because if you didn't, trust me, they don't just melt away. Time does not heal all wounds. Just getting busy doesn't make you well. So most of us have this backlog of old grief experiences still sitting there. Then something new comes along and triggers us. And then the picture just gets even more intense and more amplified. So obviously in the, in the case, in the time space of a small podcast, we can't go through all the ways to heal grief. But what I will tell you is whatever is coming up for you, whether it's anger or whether it's intense sadness or any of the other emotions I described, that's okay. There is no right way to grieve. So whatever's coming up for you is all right. You're not defective. There's not something wrong with you. If you don't go through the five stages, you'll never heal. Oh my God, every time I hear that, I just want to cringe. There are no five stages of grief. Trust me, that has been a misnomer that has grown over the years that came from the five stages of death and dying that Elizabeth Kubler-Ross wrote about. So if you don't get angry, if you don't go into denial or bargaining or any of the other parts of those five stages, don't worry. You're still okay. Whatever you're feeling is okay because it's what you're feeling. What you do want to do, though, is acknowledge it, feel it, express it. Obviously, express it appropriately because you're angry doesn't mean you get to tear the house apart or punch people out. If you're sad, you cannot stay in bed every day and just cry. But you may need to do that for a couple of days. You certainly may need to do that in the beginning. But don't feel like there's a timeline and if you're not on schedule, you're defective. Because that, I remember the days when you used to get three days off of work, three paid days to grieve. I don't know anybody in my whole 71 years of life, I don't know anybody who's ever been okay in three days. So get rid of that idea about a timeline and just love yourself. Love yourself enough to know that whatever you need to do, you need to do. And if you do it, and if you take yourself through the feelings and the expression of the feelings, you're going to be so much better off than that person who's holding on, waiting for time to heal the wounds, or the one who's running around circles, keeping busy, because that's going to heal it. Trust me, it will not. One of the reasons I put so many processes and tools in my grief book, the one I talked about in the beginning, Grief, When Will This Pain Ever End?, is because we do need to help ourselves get through the grief. So. I recommend to my clients, even though they're coming to see me to get help with their grief, but I recommend to them, do something every day, even if it's just lighting a candle and saying a prayer. Do something for yourself every day to put that intention out to the universe that you want to move through your pain, that you want to heal something every day. Take a gratitude walk. Exercise. Be sure you get good sleep. Eat good food. Don't binge on sugar products or caffeine products or other things that are not going to help you stay balanced. Don't overdo the alcohol or the drugs or the weed or whatever other things people do in order to sidetrack themselves from their pain. I hate to say it, guys, but this is one of those cases where the only way out is through. You got to walk through it. You can't sidestep it. It'll still be there waiting for you when you come back. So walk through it as best you can. Use friends for help. You don't have to do this alone. You don't have to do this alone. 
And at a certain point, become of service to someone. That is one of the best ways I know for people to heal. Help somebody else. It takes your mind off your sadness and your problems, and it puts you in the energy of giving. And that's a beautiful energy. It opens your heart, and it helps you to return to participation in the human condition. So become of service. Give of yourself. And then you'll find amazing things open up. Remember, all pain, all tribulation in life has a hidden gift. There is something in there that's going to make you stronger, deeper, wiser, uh, make your personality richer. And grief is really an experience that does that. But only if you work with and through the grief and get to the other side. Don't become that sad, angry person who is sad and angry for years. Don't become that person who gains 100 pounds because they ate to comfort themselves. Don't become that addict or that alcoholic. It's, it's really about loving yourself enough to honor your feelings, honor your pain, nurture yourself, express what you're feeling, and keep doing something every day that takes you to a place of healing, that takes you to a place where you're ready to re-enter the world. That, in my opinion, is the true definition of resiliency. Resiliency. That's what we're talking about here. Things get screwed up, change them up. Do it different. Do it in a new way. Cor course correct. Shift. Do whatever you need to do to find your way back to joy, back to living full out, back to experiencing life from your head to your toe in every possible way. Resiliency. Speaking of which, next week, be sure you join us for Change It Up Radio because I will be interviewing the queen of resiliency, Amy Scruggs. She's a media host, she's a singer, and she's now an author as well. And we'll be talking about how sh her resiliency, how her resiliency helped her come back from very difficult circumstances and now be in the place where she is soaring through life and really loving it. All right. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for being with us in this new fall season of Change It Up Radio. And now we are strictly a podcast and we get to do things in our own way. So please check us out, subscribe, like, you know the drill. Do all that stuff and help us keep going. Thank you and see you next week.